Okay, the title of this video is a little silly, but this is actually major fashion news that only happened last week. So I wanted to get into it because I did a TikTok recently that was like under a minute, quick review, here's what's happened. And it got a lot of, you know, comments and exposure and people really were interested. So I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive, get into it a bit more, talk about my thoughts on it and, you know, the industry's response. So let's do it. Okay, we're going to do a quick briefing about the law itself and what this really means. So last week, the EU banned the destruction of textiles and shoes from fashion brands. Basically, the law is going to make brands that have to destroy goods for whatever reason report the amount they have destroyed and exactly why. This is going to impact brands in different ways depending on their size. So larger fashion brands will have about two years to comply once the law passes. Uh, medium fashion brands are going to have six years and smaller brands are exempt. A little bit of background on this, this is actually announced further back in the year as part of a wider part of legislation, but last week it was preliminary approved, which is why it's big news now, because a lot of people were unsure about whether it would be able to pass given the magnitude of what it's asking. So the larger piece of legislation is called the Eco Design Re... Oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister the eco design regulation there you go um it's due to be passed at a later stage people aren't really sure about when it will be passing but legislators agreed that this piece of the legislation should pass with immediate effect because hopefully it will have some impact count the number of times i'm going to say legislation in this video the rest of the legislation could take years to come into effect so it's pretty good that we're getting this part now as a little side note another part of the legislation is that goods have to be sold with a digital passport which means you have a qr code on the label which you can scan which will tell you all these different kinds of things about where your product comes from who created it, which person sewed it in the factories potentially, the impact of the materials it's made out of. It's gonna be huge, but maybe that's for another video. Okay, let's talk about the impact this is gonna have. When you consider that textile consumption has the fourth largest impact on the environment in the EU, it literally sits behind food, housing, and mobility. So textiles is fourth. That is a massive impact on the planet. Reuters estimated that 5.8 million tonnes of textiles are discarded every year in the EU. That's insane. That's like numbers our minds can't even comprehend. And a lot of this is put into landfill or incinerated. So when you consider we could be massively changing those numbers, bringing them right down, that is going to have a huge impact on the environment if the law works. From a brand's perspective, this is a major slap in the face. This is going to have massive repercussions on the way they do business and not just fast fashion. So basically the EU spokesperson for this, Alessandra Moretti said, banning the destruction of unsold textiles and footwear will also contribute to a shift in the way fast fashion manufacturers produce their goods. From this quote, we can infer that it's fast fashion they're really going after but luxury fashion is actually so bad for destroying their goods. It's an open industry secret that brands like Burberry, Louis Vuitton, pretty much all of the luxury brands you can think of prefer to burn their textiles or slash their bags rather than having them resold for a cheaper price or you know donated they want to keep their unattainable luxury image and they will do anything to maintain this so if this law does come into effect then brands are going to have to majorly change the way they do business the way they order their garments coming in so normally brands will give themselves a product margin or they'll buy more because it's cheaper to buy in bulk knowing that they can either discount or destroy these items later on if they don't sell as much this will have to change now. Brands will have to have tighter margins and that can only be good for the environment. Already, we're starting to see a change in the way brands get rid of their unsold merchandise because we did know about this law coming to effect way before this. So some brands are trying to get ahead. I don't know if you've noticed this, maybe it's just a London thing. So maybe the London people that follow me will notice this, but I've seen a lot of secondhand stores selling first-hand products from brands like H&M. The other day I saw one from the t-shirt company or the shirt company or something. First-hand with tags on and the tags will say donated by the brand. 
To me, this just feels like another way of getting rid of merchandise without destroying it. Obviously that is good. Um, we don't want anything destroyed that's not needed to, that's so wasteful. However, I don't know about the ethics of flooding secondhand stores with fast fashion and whether that will be great for consumers and whether that's just a way for brands to still produce more, knowing that they can make a small commission off the donations maybe, if they do a partnership with charity stores that they buy it for like, I don't know, even 10% is profit to them. Or, you know, just not have to pay fines from the EU if they have merchandise they have to get rid of. Instead of destroying it, they will just pass it on to charity stores and charity stores, as we know, cannot handle the volume they are given right now. So imagine what happens if every brand wants to start giving them their unsold merchandise. The Global South already is inundated with our charity store cast-offs. And if this were to happen, if all brands were to go this way, then the problem would only get worse. It kind of leads me on to another point, which is the limitations of this law as it stands. Right now it hasn't been passed. This is just like a preliminary acceptance. They're still deliberating the specifics of it, which I'll go into later, the questions that people still have about it. But what they've said right now is that the legislation will mean brands are self-regulating the amount of unsold textiles. As you may be aware, as a lot of people in the sustainable fashion industry know, self-regulation does not work. Sometimes it works, but on the whole, it's not a great idea because brands will try to do anything in their power to dupe the government, dupe consumers into thinking they're doing more than they are. And obviously I'm generalizing here, you have great smaller brands that won't do this, but big fashion brands, yeah, they're gonna try run you for your money. As of right now, this is the closest the EU has come to banning overproduction, which is, you know, in my opinion, one of the biggest issues in the fashion industry right now. But is this actually going to make brands more conscious about what they're creating and the impact they're having on the environment? Or is it just going to force them to be sneakier or smarter about how they're destroying goods? I don't know that it's addressing the root of the problem. Also, I don't know if it's going to be able to stop situations like we're seeing in Cambodia, where they are burning clothes in kilns, which has major health and environment implications. I've spoken about this on my TikTok if you want to follow me there. but. To help that situation, it would require the whole supply chain to be policed in this way, which I just don't think we're going to get from what they've proposed right now. There's going to be no jurisdiction for the factories in the global south where these brands are producing. I think it's just going to be EU headquarters or, you know, post-consumer stores which are impacted by this. So that's not good enough, really. It's a start, but it's not good enough. This is what we still don't know. Um, the law, as I said, hasn't been approved yet, so it's still subject to change. And a lot of industry professionals have been coming out with some questions. Brands haven't been that ecstatic about the news, as you can imagine, and they've had some questions too. For instance, will this law apply to all EU companies that are trading in the EU or just the ones that have their headquarters here? I say here, I'm no longer part of the EU because of Brexit and that kills me. But ignore me when I say this, I still can't get my mind around it. If it applies to just the brands headquartered in the EU, then it's got some limitations. If it applies to all brands that trade in the EU or all brands that trade over a certain amount, in the EU, it could have some serious reach. This is what happened with the New York Fashion Act. It applied to brands that I think were selling $100,000 a year in New York, which is pretty much all of the big brands you can mention, had to comply with this pretty much throughout their chain. So you can imagine if the EU has similar criteria, then we will see some major change. Even if it's self-regulated, even if it's limited, it will impact a whole lot more brands and that will have a collective good. We also need to know where this is going to apply in the supply chain and the design process of a garment. So brands will create sort of a prototype for the idea before they send it for processing at the suppliers. The suppliers will then send back samples to make sure it's exactly what the brands want before mass producing. 
So it depends where they're going to be applying this no destruction rule to, because obviously if a sample is unfit, then selling it on isn't a great idea. Potentially what you could do is sell it on to colleges and fashion universities, which is what some brands do do, um, but it will be a lot harder to enforce that. And obviously, like I talked about the situation in Cambodia, that would apply to factories and how factories have to deal with this new law or whether it only applies to post-consumer purchasing and that sort of issue. Anyway, guys, I think that's all I have to say on the subject for now. I may do a follow-up video if you guys like this and as we see the story progress. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for clicking on my video of all the videos here and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.